Often Unitarians like Osama Abdullah would point out that Jesus was given authority to try and refute the Trinity. My initial conclusion on Matthew 28.18 was that being given authority refers to Jesus being given the Messianic Kingdom. It has no bearing on the Trinity because Jesus already had authority as God in heaven, simply the Messianic Kingdom being handed over to Jesus. As for 1 Corinthians 8.6, when James White uses it to refer to the deity of Christ, he and the others have made the point that Paul is alluding to the Shema, and that the Jews knew from the Septuagint that Yahweh is the, own, is the one Lord. My initial way of looking at the text was that Jesus was Lord in a supreme sense, the same sense as Yahweh God, and not Lord in an ordinary sense. But the Tetragrammaton wasn't there. That was the initial reading I had. However, now that I understand the Shema point by James White and others properly, I am not so concerned about the position that they take. There's even a video that James White has done recently in response to Anthony Buzzard, where he mentions this particular point, which can be found in the description below. After a session with the Insyrian Encyclopedia, and of course looking at the text again, let's read Matthew 12, 15 to 19. Firstly, to start with, quote, Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him, followed him, and he healed all who were ill. He warned them not to tell others about him. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Here is my servant who I have chosen, the one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. And a smouldering wick he will not snuff out, till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name the nations will put their hope. Unquote. Next we shall quote from Matthew twenty twenty eight. Quote, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Unquote. Matthew quotes Isaiah forty two and applies it to Jesus. Isaiah 42 is one of the servant passages, along with Isaiah 49, 50, and 52, 13 to 53, 12. Jesus also makes it clear that he came as a servant to ransom us from, our, from the debt of our sin. In light of this, what did Jesus have to do to become a servant? And didn't he have to relinquish his royal kingly authority during this time? Yes, he did. Now, if Matthew is clear that Jesus was a servant on earth... Why should that surprise us to discover that Jesus was speaking about being given authority after the resurrection? Wouldn't we expect Jesus to receive authority after having set it aside to become a slave on earth, as Philippians 2 later confirms? No. Only those who are Trinitarians by tradition rather than by scripture will be caught out by this. Hopefully this has addressed the point that has been raised by Osama Abdullah and many others, and I thank you for taking the time to watch.